If you like this channel and what I do here, please help to support my work by checking out one of my books, available from Lulu Publishing and Amazon.com. Thank you. Hi folks, Carl James here from Electric Media Madness, joined by Dan Ryan again today, how are you doing, mate? Good, good. good. Uh, we are talking about Deep Space Nine today, season five. We've got six episodes that yeah. we're going to rattle through. Uh, the first one is the finale from season four. Yeah. Um, but we've grouped these because they're principally um, about sort of the prophets, the Dominion, changelings, that sort of thing. Mm. Um, uh, the six episodes, Broken Link, Apocalypse Rising, and then two from early season five, which is the Rap Rapture and the Begotten. Yeah. And then the two part at the middle of season five, uh, in Purgatory's Shadow and By Inferno's Light. I've just been briefly looking through my trusty dusty Star Trek Next Generation, Next Generation uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine companion, I should say. Um, wrong just video. To, yeah, wrong video. <laughs> <laughs> just to make some notes and things like that, uh, cause, because there's a lot we're going to cover with this one. Mm -hmm. So we're going to jump straight in to begin with, I have my notepad here, Broken Link. Um, Probably the least, really, to say about this episode of all of them, I think. I mean, there's some stuff that you might want to say. This story is uh, Odo's little story in that he starts to sort of melt and... <laughs> uh, he's losing his changeling abilities. And they conclude that the only way to solve the problem is to head off and look for the founders in the in the Gamma Quadrant. I think I know what the problem was. Go on, then. <laughs> See, um, he, uh, you know, he saw that lady, she was interested... And uh, we, we've really never seen annoying lady. <laughs> we, we've never seen Odo aroused before, and maybe this is what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that I found it very very annoying, uh, and some of the fans sit in seriously. Some of the fans said, "Well, how did he get infected with this thing to make him lose out?" I think it might have even been her. Because she was really? a, like a one episode she, character. She's infected. Him in STD. <laughs> yeah, she's infected. <laughs> Michael Burnham. <laughs> so they head off to the Gamma Quadrant. Uh, and it turns out that they, they gave it to him, the founders, yeah. and he's going to be judged because he killed the changeling in the episode, the adversary at the beginning, yeah. end of season three. So it <laughs> took them a year to figure out what they were going to do <laughs> so, with him. Shall we do some... Uh, hmm, maybe. Uh, we'll think maybe. It, so we're, the, you know, I mean, their attitude is, well, we're, we're timeless and all this kind of thing, and he we need wait. to deliberate on these things. <laughs> I mean, it had more to do with the fact that the produce, uh, the, the studio execs decided they wanted to take New Space Nine off in a more Klingon direction and bring yeah. Warp in, so they kind of pushed the Dominion out of the way for a bit, but thankfully we finally got it back at that point. And these episodes onwards, as we're talking about these, this shows the real strength of Deep Space Nine yeah. with, um, with the Dominion. Yeah. Because um, I think it was a mistake to push the Dominion into the background, and it very much yeah. comes back to the forefront here, and better for it. I thought it was interesting, because ultimately at that point, when he's judged, he loses his powers, he becomes a humanoid. Yeah. Um, and he's effectively abandoned by his people, isn't he? Basically, Which, yeah. And we saw that in season three where he's talking about when he was being tortured by Garrick, you know, home, I want to go home and all this kind of thing, and my people and mm. the great link and that. And, um, that that's going to be gone at, the, at this point in the series yeah, yeah. anyway. Now he thinks that's going to be it. So, any thoughts on that initially, that storyline? I mean... I was just, I was just more like, to be honest, hey, more changes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> there hadn't been a lot for. No, no. But then the standout point for that episode really is the end. Yes. They when yeah. they all get back on the station, he's human or whatever, and and you see Garon, and they're like, he's a changeling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like oh, yeah. oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Which is a double bluff for the following episode. Which is, but, yeah. but it's yeah. good how they did that because it was season ender. Yeah. Gowron, who's been there since season four of Next Generation, Star Trek Next Generation, and uh, a very well-established character in, in Star Trek by this point. Um, how long has he been a changeling for? I mean, obviously not since the beginning of, <laughs> since his first appearance, yeah. but for a while at least, that's the assumption at that point. Mm. So, great stuff. And, um, I mean, we had the Kira pregnancy starting, kicking off here, which is yeah. neither here nor there. That gets resolved in another episode we'll talk yeah. about. Um, but we also talked about how it had kind of pushed Kira into the background quite a bit. It does, yeah. Mm. She becomes, yeah, she just becomes. Yeah, a I mean, it pregnant was, woman character. Yeah. I mean, it was her real life pregnancy. Yeah, yeah. Actress, so there's not yeah. really a, 
a lot they could have done, but uh, yeah. But they wrote, they wrote for her differently, mm -hmm. which was they very much changed the character, weird. didn't they? Yeah, but, yeah. yeah, different dynamic. Mm. Which she does get her mojo back after after the pregnancy. I think yeah, mm. she definitely gets it back. So one other interesting little thing in this episode as well, which I wanted to talk about is because it will tie into what we're going to talk about with other episodes is when Garak tries to wipe out the founders with the Defiant. Yeah. Um, you know, but that's brought up, you know, he's obliterating the Great Link and all this kind of yeah. little, little bit of genocide, war yeah. and all that kind of thing. But that's ultimately is brought about because he goes on on the on the mission into the Gala Quadrant because he wants to speak to the Changelings to find out if there are any survivors from the yeah. attack on the Founders' homeworld in season three. And she turns around to him and she says, Cardassian survivors? You know, um, they're dead. You're dead. Cardassia is dead. Your people were doomed the moment they attacked us. Does yeah. that answer your question? And that is something that sets up for the whole of the rest of the series. Begins with the, with the two-parter we're going to talk about. Yeah. But I thought that was a great bit of laying the found, foundations for where, where the series mm. was going to go. I don't think there's anything really else I wanted to say about that episode other than that. I mean, it's a, it's a great little story. Yeah, but... a, a lot of it's just sort of Odo melting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Odo melting. Yeah. But like, yeah, not a huge amount. Ha little bits happen here and there, but mm. yeah. So, shall we move on to the next episode, which is effectively a two-parter, isn't it? Yeah. Um, beginning of season five, Apocalypse Rising. Some great things set up here. We've got the uh, Ducat now fighting a bit of a guerrilla war against the Cardassians, really. We saw that beginning in Season 4, but yeah. they've also got like the, uh, the Klingon sort of regalia around yeah. their Cardassian uniforms and all that, and got the uh, the Bird of Prey and all that, and we see more of Damar now as well, his first officer on the ship, yeah. who plays a very big character in the, in the series to come. Our regular characters all genetically changed to look like Klingons and that, which is a great little idea. It's not the first time it's been done, because we've seen Picard as a Romulan in Next Generation and things like that, but it's, it's great to see those. <laughs> it, I was watching it, and they're like, we're, we're going to sneak in. Yeah, so yeah. We're going to infiltrate the Klingons. Like, How, How the you gonna fuck do are you going to do that? <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly they walk out yeah. and I'm like, oh. What's the matter? Ah. You've never seen a Klingon before. Oh, okay. <laughs> It's, it's a bit of a cliche, it was a bit of a fan pleaser, but it, it worked It worked really well. One of the letdowns of that episode is you've got General Martok, who, who's met Worf multiple times. Um, you've got Gowron, who knows Worf, like, he's known him for yeah. years, knows exactly what he looks like. And he still looks like Worf! <laughs> I know they changed his ridges slightly on his head, but it's clearly still Worf. Yeah. And he's walking around in that hall of heroes. And They're that, just like, like oh, hello, there. random person. <laughs> and Garon's there, looking around at all the people and that. And, everything. and he doesn't, you know, it's only when he tries to, this is your death, you know, comes up to him, yeah. like, whatever it is that he does. Uh, you know, it's only then when, it, oh, oh, it's Worf. You know? yeah. I mean, Garon must have really shit eyesight. <laughs> he really needs some optical surgery. You know, maybe he's he's not that, he doesn't look that young anymore, you know? Maybe. Maybe yeah. his, his eyes are going a bit, yeah. a bit of cataracts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the, the real twist of this episode is um, that Garon isn't the changeling. No. It's Martok, General yeah. Martok. We're assuming, with the dialogue, where he says the Martok changeling kept pushing more and more for war and all this kind of thing, so even in Way of the Warrior, I'm assuming that would have been the changeling. But what's interesting in mm. Way of the Warrior is when they do the test, he cuts his hand and the blood drops on the table. There is another scene later in the series where, the, you know, it's like, um, oh, we, you know, we can get around blood tests kind of thing, so yeah. maybe blood tests don't prove that a changeling is a change. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but Odo is the one that susses it out, yeah. and uh, there's a great little scene there where the cha Martok changeling tries to throttle Odo, and then all the Klingons are like, bam, 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 but it kind of, again, it's weird, because Garon's like, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you get home safety to your space station, all that, um, but then he says to Worf, like, you should have killed me, because <laughs> the next time, I'm not going to, you know... And then he says, oh, Cisco's like, we need to stop the war and all this kind of thing. And he says, oh, no, no, we're not <laughs> going to stop the war. We might talk and let a few planets come back to you and all this kind of thing, but we're still going to... Yeah. And then the war carries on, <laughs> you know. It's like, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. yeah. So there's kind of weird internal continuity because mm. he's talked about how the changelings are trying to split the Federation and the Klingons. <laughs> he knows that that's what they're doing. Yeah. So they are like, the two main powers. Oh, well. Yeah. But he still wants to carry on fighting. <laughs> so, you know, who knows? 
but that that's going to come back to bite him on the backside <laughs> soon. But we'll come to that. Uh, it's another one. It's it's a bit like Broken Link, where lots of little things moving around, lots of little things happening. It's a good solid episode, but, but not a lot. Well, there's like a yeah. couple of important things. But yeah, they're just sort of at the end. Yeah, the rest of the episode, not a huge amount. Yeah, of big things are happening. Yeah, yeah. But we're going to get into some really interesting territory now because uh, um, the next episode is uh, we're we're going to talk about is Rapture. Um, and this is predominantly a Cisco episode. He finds the city of Bahala underneath yes. uh, the ground, and they they start digging it up and that, and they uh, and he's trying to decipher this obelisk thing that was. Um, I bet he had there. fun filming this episode because he just acts like a stoner for yeah. half of it. <laughs> yeah. Like the first half, he just acts like yeah. really high. He's just like <laughs> making patterns. He's doing like. Um, Roy Neary and Close the Cats the Third Kind making the mouse go mashed potato. <laughs> he's, like, he's cutting up his veg, making like Bajoran symbols and all that, you know. Um, and uh, Jake's like, well, what? oh, it's the prophets again. Oh, Christ, you know, what, what, what are we going to get now? You know, all this kind of thing. A few other little things I wanted to mention there as well. We've got the new uniforms at this point in the series, the grey uniforms, the old ones kind of disappear at that point. I somehow didn't notice. You somehow missed that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Cassidy Yates coming back as well. Yeah. That was another nice little uh, thing after a, a time in prison for helping the Marquis. Bajor is about to be admitted into the Federation yeah. at this point. So Kai Wynn turns up on the station as well. And she's trying to manipulate it for her own purposes. But um, ultimately, she comes to sort of go along with the idea that, you know, there's not really a lot I can do about this. They're going to join. We're going to join whether yeah. like it or not. So. <laughs> but then she kind of has something work in her favour because. Cisco starts having these visions, uh, one of which is Locust, you know, <laughs> uh, flying over Bajor, coming mm. through the wormhole, and then heading towards Cardassia, which is a prediction of the future. And also that he says Bajor must stand alone, Bajor must not join the Federation. Yeah. And because of that, and because of the fact that he's the emissary, and the Bajorans listen to the emissary, and uh, Kai Wynn is going to have a vested interest in them not joining, yeah. so she's going to go along with it, mm. isn't she? So that that brings it to an end. The the the, the, the talks and everything is all it's over. Yeah. Bajor's out. For now anyway. And there's other things going on in the episode as well, which kind of again a lot of this ties back to the emissary at the beginning of the season series. Yeah. Um we also have Cisco making a choice again in his life, you know, a big choice, you mm. know. These these visions potentially could kill him. Yeah. Um but he feels that it's really, really important to see where it goes, to see what he can, you know, <laughs> there's an important, there's something really, really yeah. important to learn from this. But he has to make his choice between, you know, being a Starfleet officer, which is obviously one of the contradictions we've been the emissary, and the other one is his family, mm. Cassidy now, and Jake again. Which he chooses the role he, of the emissary. Yeah, which is weird because at this point throughout the series, we've always felt like Jake would always be a first priority. Mm. And now it's like, no, I, I really do need to see where this goes, you know. What? And, and Jake's like, well, it's going to kill you, sort of thing. And when he collapses on the operating table and he can't make the decision for himself, <clears throat> yeah. Jake makes the decision yeah. um, to have this operation done to stop him from having these visions. And interestingly, we find out that the person that did the operation <laughs> on Cisco was not... Uh, you know, not who we thought he was. Yeah. But we'll come to that. It's a proper Cisco episode mm. with his family and that. Yeah, yeah. Which I haven't seen for a while. Yeah, yeah. And that that was nice. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I think it's one of those. It's probably a pivotal episode. It's one of those pivotal episodes in in Cisco's journey. Mm. Um, of course, you haven't got to the point yet of seeing where Cisco's character is really going to go in relation yeah. to the the prophets and all that. But it's kind of turning that corner. Mm. In his role as the emissary, he's much more mm. deeply committed to. What another thing I kind of noticed is through the first sort of few seasons, just the way that the role is played, he's just like really smug. He's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm enjoying my time yeah, here. Yeah, 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 I'm enjoying this. Yeah. And then, and then, sort of around this sort of time, he really sort of goes into it. Yeah. And that that smug, like, yeah, yeah, yeah sort yeah. of goes. Yeah. It's still there a little bit, but it's it is, largely but, yeah. yeah. He, you can tell he is the captain now. He's yeah. the lead character in yeah. the show. Yeah. Forgotten. Yeah. Two little storylines running alongside each other. One is that um, Odo gets given this from Quark, a little baby changeling. Yeah. And Dr. Mora, his uh, former 
scientist that, that looked that looked over him when he was um, first discovered appears as well to get involved with the study of the changeling and because he's working for Starfleet at this point as well Dr Moore yeah. is studying the changelings and that and Kira finally giving birth to uh, Keiko and Chief O'Brien's baby I really enjoyed the uh, the relationship developing between Odo and yeah yeah it's the strength of this episode. The Kira stuff is near the near nor there, but we get biz- a visit from Shikara again as well. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's sort of yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's the Odo part of the yeah. story. It's a fantastic story. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, really good. It's re- just seeing him interact with this jar of slime, basically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> basically yeah, yeah, it's a, form it's like a, a real, girl, it? Yeah. a real connection with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, he really emotes, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, and then you just like, and then and then it like dies, and you just like. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, after all that, yeah. And that, but then, he's holding it in his hands. Yeah. And then it, it soaks into his yeah. hands. That scene where he like he runs off. Yeah, yeah. And he turns into a bird was was kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was like like all this afterwards when he but you you realise the <laughs> I know what you're saying, <laughs> but then at the end of it, it's like that expression on his face he's afterwards like, when he's I'm like back, yeah. He's back, but then he suddenly <laughs> realises yes, he's got his abilities back. He's a changeling again. I think it's almost like he's lost something. He'd fully adjusted, really, to, to being a yeah. humanoid. Yeah, yeah. He's got used to the idea, and yeah, he got used to drinking, eating, sleeping, yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. stuff. But That's he doesn't it. need to do that anymore. Yeah. He sleeps in a bowl. <laughs> 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 there is an interesting story, actually, in one episode where I mean, it's a non-event episode, but uh, talking about his bed after he's become a changeling again. And he's like, well, I, I did try sleeping in the bed, but I just kept sliding out of it. Yeah, so I it, think that was it in the two part of was it? Was it for the uniform? Ah, uh, yes, yeah, because yeah. we're not going to talk about that in this video. Yeah. But yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Um, he's sliding out of the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that is a wonderful. It's a great arc for Odo's character. And again, you know, we have um, the Doctor, who's not quite the Doctor, <laughs> yeah. uh, involved in all that business as well. Mm. So, what would he have thought about the fact that Odo had got his powers back, you know, at that point? Yeah. Which, I suppose then, we need to go into this two-parter, don't we now? What the hell? I'll, I'll let you run with this one, because you've watched it very recently. It's been a couple of weeks since I've watched it. Purgatory Shadow and By Inferno's Light. Go! A lot to say about these <laughs> no, no. two. I was quite in- interested watching it, because you were like, this is where it really all kicks off. Yeah. And I start watching it. I'm like 15 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Is something going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is something going to happen? And then... It's, it's a really misleading story, it is, isn't it? Because you think nothing's going to come yeah. of it. And then they go off into the Gamma Quadrant to follow this signal. Uh, and then this suddenly, is Garak and Wolf, yeah, yeah. we should say, for those yes. people that are not familiar with the story. Yet. Uh, and then suddenly they're like, oh yeah, there's like a fleet here. <laughs> yeah. There's like yeah. a fleet here. Massive fleet yeah. of Jemadar ships, yeah. And then they get... Uh, captured. Yeah, yeah. Taken to a prison. Yeah. There's other stuff going on in the background, and it's yeah. they do that really well. It's like, yeah, because all all you stuff. can't quite see that. There's like somebody's fighting with Jemadars in the background and all that yeah. in the prison, and you're like, who's that? And then it and then suddenly they're like, they're like, oh, the the person's been released from isolation. You're like, oh, okay, we're gonna meet a new character then, and then you're like, Bashir. It's Dr. <laughs> Bashir. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in his blue uniform, it, not yeah. that so. How many? How long? You know, was he a changeling on the station for? Yeah. And the, uh, to point out as well, the changeling is still on the station, pretending yeah. to be Doctor Bashir. Yeah. They don't know on the station that he's a changeling. I think. They, yeah, well, while I was thinking about it, I was, if anyone was to be a changeling, I'd have thought it was him. I don't know why. I just had a. Maybe it was because he was before in the adversary. In the adversary. He was. Yeah. So yeah. maybe that was why. I'm I kind of setting that. the groundwork for it. Yeah. 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 But um, like. If it obviously it surprised me, but if it was any character, him it being him was probably the one that su- would surpri- yeah. surprise me the least. Yes, yeah. I think yeah, one yeah. time you you accidentally said that there was a changeling somewhere, and yeah, that was talking yeah. about like yeah the first two episodes like Gowron and that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I was like, oh, I thought that'd be Bashir. Yeah. But then later I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that led a surprise for the Gowron. So. Yeah. But perhaps not so much for. But it was still a, co- and you get tri- double, triple whammy on this one because then, having thought that Martok has just gone out of the series now, there's Martok yeah, he comes right, in, yeah. and also there's Inarbrintain. Yes, and you find out 
that he was Garrick's dad as well. Yeah. <laughs> All those years, he hid the fact that he was Garrick's dad. Yeah. Um, he survived the attack on the uh, on the on the Founders' homeworld. There's there's a lot in this. Oh episode. God, yeah. It's amazing yeah. because, the, like the first sort of fifteen twenty minutes, nothing happens, mm -hmm. and then everything. <laughs> yeah. So that's just the prison. I mean, yeah. The fact that and the fighting, that's brilliant. That is like, and then Worf. And the, and the and the Jemadar, he's just constantly fighting the Jemadar and that. Well, galan has yeah. been uh, Martok's been doing that for ages now. Because yeah. didn't he say like he's been there for two years or something like that, Martok? Yeah, it was something two like that. Two years yeah. he's been in the prison, and then they oh, it's a new Klingon. We'll fight him, you know. And, yeah. the gem, and they give him like the least powerful Jemadar, and then the next one, yeah. and the next one, and he keeps fighting. He's got got broken ribs and all that <laughs> and everything, you know. Um, and he just keeps fighting him and fighting him mm. and fighting him. And then at the end, it's like the Jemadar says. The, the water system kill him and he says oh, oh no he says, uh, I can't beat this all I can do is kill him yeah and it's like you know he's I just he's like a badass wolf isn't he you know, yeah he just you know yeah I mean even that little tiny bit of story which is very small compared to all the mm. other stuff that's going on in the two-parter is really compelling really yeah. really good um you see the bond build between wolf and Martok yeah. Which then goes through the whole of the rest of the series. You know, it's a, it's a yeah. great. Well, yeah, you pair find out that he's going to yeah, come gonna on the station come after on the, the fleet in on the station. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that's another thing is that um, right. So we'll backtrack a little bit. Yeah, that's um, jumping ahead of it. Yeah, <laughs> Ducat turns up at the station. Yeah, and his daughter Zial is living on the station, and there's a very interesting little hint to where this is going to go because he struts onto the station. He's no longer talking about um, the car, the Klingons and the yeah. war. He's not wearing his Klingon regalia around his uniform anywhere. He's back in a proper Cardassian uniform. I well, once again did yeah. not complete. I guess I just yeah, don't yeah. look at clothing. Um, <laughs> and he's like full-on arrogant Ducat yeah. again. And that's a kind of a clue yeah. to where this is going. Um, then he finds out that Zial, his daughter, is in a relationship with Garak, yeah. who's like, Garak killed Ducat's dad, yeah. him kill, so he's like, got him like over the balcony yeah. about to kill him, you know, and Zial's like, father, please, you know, <laughs> um, I, I mean, that kind of, that, ser that story arc kind of ends there a little bit, because Garak goes off, but then Garak comes back at the end, and um, so you can see that it's going to be Zial and Garak as it, as it goes on. But Ducat says to Zial, you need to pack and leave. Yeah, he's like, you need to go to Cardassia. And it's now. like, why? It's like, well, yeah, isn't this place well protected? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's safer than yeah. Cardassia. But you and find out why. The fleet that you talked about, yeah, the fleet comes through the wormhole. The Dominion arrive in the Alpha Quadrant. That was, it was very clever how they like, yeah. held you seeing that fleet. Yeah, yeah. Until then, you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> this is it now. This is, this is the Dominion arriving properly. Yeah. Mm. They've hinted at this for like three years that they're going to come. And then it's like, oh shit, we can have a battle right now. Yeah, yeah. And then, then they just go past. You're yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which takes us back to Rapture, where Cisco said, "Locust, you know, yeah, yeah. they fly, they come in towards Bajor, and then they turn, and they head up to Cardassia." Yeah. Which is where the fleet goes. You know, it doesn't attack. It goes to, and Ducat's in his bird of prey, and they've got the Defiant and a few runabouts and that, which is. It's poor, really. Yeah. You know, Ducat's like heading towards the fleet in his bird of prey, yeah. and Kira's like, "Don't be a hero. Don't try and attack them on your own." And she's, he's like, "You misunderstand me. I'm joining them." Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Dominion. The Cardassia has joined the Dominion, mm. and that's where we're going. And he'd been the one conducting all the and negotiations. And he'd been doing it. Yeah. 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 And, and he's, he's their new leader. New leader. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and back at the prison camp. The water comes out and says, all oh, Cardassian prisoners step forward and all that. Except just, you. Except Garak, obviously, <laughs> yeah. you know, because he's not in favour with Ducat. Um, and he says, oh, you've been released. Congratulations on your status as new as Dominion citizens. And you're thinking, you know, yeah, yeah. this is it. This is the Cardassia really has joined, you know, and that's it. So, I didn't uh, think Garak could have claustrophobia. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, again, that's something that comes back with his character. But, didn't yeah, see that one coming. Yeah. So he's working in the wall to try and get the communication. Yeah. One major plot hole in this episode, which interestingly does get addressed later in the series to do with Bashir. But we won't get into that in this video. The runabout, just there, above the prison camp, the Jamadeo haven't blew yeah, up. They just left it. Took there. it away. They just kind of left it just lying there in orbit around yeah. the prison camp. 
So as soon as they can get the communication system up and running, they can beam out, which they do. That's how they escape yeah. the prison in the end. Then they get word that the fleet is coming from Cardassia to deep back to Deep Space Nine again. Yeah. So they assemble. The Klingons turn up. We get Garon back. Yeah. You know, Garon's like we've kicked, kicked our asses basically. Yeah. You know, we're like, and Cisco says, "Well, rejoin us again. Sign the peace treaty again, yeah. and we'll fight alongside you." And um, you know, that's not what the Dominion are expecting if we do that. And so he, he signs the peace treaty. The Klingon fleet's there. Garon's in charge of it. Then the Romulans turn up as well. They, I, they I de cloak and turn I up. I love that line when they're like, the permissions are requesting to join. It's like, permission granted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you've got this shit massive fleet there of Klingons, Cardassia, uh, Klingon, Romulan, Federation ships, and all the rest of it. And there's no fleet. I, I, I was I was watching this and I like I, I pressed my tablet screen and I'm like like eight minutes left. Yeah. It's like what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like they're trying to figure out what's going on. We can detect things. Mm. We can te detect disturbances like cloak ships maybe yeah. they're saying. But the Dominion haven't got cloaking technology and all that. But but they can't see the ships. Well, how what do we know to fire at? You know, it's like are they, is it cheaper brides? Well, should we fire? What should we fire yeah. at? You know? And Major Keir is in charge of the Defiant at this point. Mm. And um, then they realise that well, the runabouts has gone. Yeah. And Changeling Bashir has got uh, like a proto matter device that he's going to blow up the Bajoran sun yeah. and like, wipe out the entire solar system, the wormhole, the space station, the fleet, everything. Mm. And like. Shit, quick, we've got to stop him, you know. So they warp into where the sun is, <laughs> grab all of the, uh, you know, and manage to stop him just in time. If they'd have been off a little bit. Uh, yeah, yeah that would have been the end of the show the, anymore. Yeah, the end of the series. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really call it Deep Space Nine when there is no <laughs> Deep Space Nine or any I, characters I, like I will admit it would have been quite amusing if they'd have, like, misjudged it and got straight <laughs> into the, the sun. sun. <laughs> <laughs> but and then the warp core blows up and it blows yeah. it up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but that that takes Bashir Changeling out of the equation. Yeah. And I love the gloating with the cut at the end. It's like, look at the chaos we managed to create yeah. and we didn't really do anything. You know, <laughs> It's like, you know, well, you beat us today, but tomorrow, who knows, yeah. this kind of thing. Which is kind of setting the, the stage for where where the series is going to go. And it's um, also kind of like, well, you better hurry up with it. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Waiting. yeah, don't worry. You're, not, you're nearly there. You're nearly there. Yeah, I don't, I don't think really there's much to say about it. I mean, it is absolutely jam-packed full, this two-parter. And some people might say, mm, it doesn't really deliver. But the thing with Deep Space Nine is it gives you bits. Mm. It gives you bits, but it doesn't give you everything in one go. Which and is I, a bit annoying. <laughs> but I kind of liken that to mm. Game of Thrones in a way. You know how they... I do yeah. think that you know there is some of that to it. I think the, the reason Get bits that, and pieces, bits and pieces can keep. I think the reason that works more in Game of Thrones is just because there's so many different characters mm. everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That they can do yeah, that. Yeah. Like in Game in uh, Deep Space Nine, it, it's not quite like that because most of them are all in one yeah, place. Yeah, yeah. And your other your external characters they turn up and come back, <clears> and it's usually when that happens that the changes happen. Yeah. So it's like when Garon turns up, or Martok turns, up, or Dukat turns. Up, those are when the shit or Kai Win, for example. That's when the you always find that the, those are the moments when the story arc shifts forward. Yeah, and like nothing really big happens away from them. Well, I mean, I mean one big <laughs> so thing far, is obviously the fact that Cardassia has joined the Dominion and the Dominion is now in the Alpha Quadrant. I mean, that's a big, that's but a big one. That did still like, but it's directly involve them. It didn't directly involve them. No, no, <laughs> they made, but then they flew past them, didn't yeah. they? Basically, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're not. We're, you might be Deep Space Nine. This is not what the show's about, but we'll yeah. just fly past you <laughs> to a better TV yeah. series that's over there in Cardassia. <laughs> <laughs> The adventures of Goldacott and, and Weir and all that on Cardassia. So, yeah. But I, I do, I think it's it's up there for me amongst my favourite episodes. It's, it's not like rah, right at the top, mm. but it's it's getting into that top league of that two part. It's getting into that top league of Deep Space Nine episodes for me. Yeah. Yeah. There are far better episodes, as you will see, um, but it's it's yeah, it's starting to move into that territory. Mm. And I tend to find that a lot of these episodes, I mean, even though it's a very low key episode, Rapture is a fantastic episode. Yeah. It's a brilliant, and it it you often get those quiet moments, don't you? The character studies with Cisco and all that kind of thing, mm. and they usually end up, oftentimes, end up being the most rewarding episodes of Deep Space Nine. Yeah. Away from all the big spectacle and the big battles and mm. moving things forward, it's those quiet moments. 
And again, the Begotten is, a, is just like Rapture in that respect. Ignoring the Kira stuff, the Odo part of that story is brilliant. Yeah, that, that mainly it's is brilliant the story. Like the the yeah. Kira stuff is pretty whatever forgettable. Yeah, like, yeah. It, and thankfully it's not in the episode that much. I think much more Odo, isn't it's it? It's just there because the, it kind of... Needed uh, to it, just end the they pregnancy. Needed, just yeah. in the background of an episode. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess... It works together because they're both. Well, it does because they're both suffering they're a both, loss, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they both yeah. kind of lost a, yeah. their child, basically. Yeah. It probably was the best moment <laughs> on which to to rest the Kira pregnancy yeah. story, um, because it probably I can't think of any other episodes that season that would have at that point anyway that would have tied in as well mm. as a double story. Um, the Kira pregnancy on its own wouldn't really have been enough to sustain a whole episode. And but if the, they did, it would have been a really shit yeah, one. <laughs> yeah. But the Odo story could have sustained the entire episode, I think. Basically. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Basically I think you could was, have had that yeah. being the whole A-plot. Mm. I mean, the two-parter has got like ten A-plots. <laughs> you know. And then about five B-plots that end yeah, up yeah, being yeah. A-plots. A-plots, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a brilliant, brilliant point in the series, and it only gets better, in my opinion, from here on out. Um... It's one of the sad things about Deep Space Nine is that I, I I think from season two onwards definitely Deep Space Nine is a really good solid series. There's some few um, clunkers episodes, but there's some fantastic episodes. But for those people that probably appreciate wow massive sort of epic space stuff and lots of wow moments yeah. and all that kind of thing, um, you really have to hang in there. For quite some time, I think you get a few here in season three, a few in the, mm. uh, there in season four. It's only really season five, mid season five onwards that it, it really kicks into that gear. Um, I, th I think the big the big thing for me where I was like eh, about it early on is um, it's like you, you you talk about this a lot and you're like oh it's so good it's amazing it's so good and and I start watching it I'm like no it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I think I that's to, that's early on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I tend to see it from two perspectives. There's there's three things actually about Deep Space Nine that I that give it my sort of label of this is an amazing series. I love the characters. Mm. I love the characters, and I love the world that they built around it. The mm. Cardassian withdrawal of Bajor, the Bajor, Bajoran people trying to get their independence, um, Starfleet trying to administrate but not be seen to be like taking over Bajor mm. and then the Cardassians coming back and the, the world building the Dominion mm. all that the whole the Changelings the Vorta yeah. you know and the Klingons coming in and out the Romulans they're, they're, they're using so much of the Star Trek universe and and creating this really big yeah. in Star Trek Next Generation and the original series of Star Trek as well you get the feeling that they're just flying from planet to planet and it, on all these empires that are kind of out there, they, they, they meet them every now and again, they have a bit of a couple yeah, yeah. and then they fly off. And the world of everything that's going on around them in Deep Space Nine is not going away. No, it's, no, it's still the, there. Yeah, yeah. It's still there, ticking away in the background. It's changing from, you know, every few episodes or something new is happening. They get elected a new uh, Kai on Bajor and all these things. And then they're the first minister, Shakar, mm. and that. Uh, Cisco being the emissary... And then it's kind of up to the next level on that. So you constantly got this mm. world building. Garak, you know, and then Zial coming in and falling in love. And then you find out that in Arbrintain was... And people some people are soap opery type stuff, yeah. you know. But So again, there's that. The characters. I love the characters. I love the world mm. setting. Then you've got stuff which you've seen bits of already, but you will see a lot more of that. Is When the shit really hits the fan in Deep Space Nine, it is epic and huge. Yeah. Some of the best battles in science fiction that you will see are in Deep Space Nine. Massive fleets coming up against each other. And if you're into all that kind of... I'm not particularly into military warfare, but I love the technology of it. The space, the fleets, the ships, the technology, all that kind of thing. And the way it's done, for the time as well, you know, yeah. 1990s. I mean, it's, it's one of those that I put it on a par with, like, Babylon 5 mm. and Battlestar Galactica in terms of that spectacle, that yeah. epic, big... And the other thing is, I love the quiet moments in Deep Space Nine. Yeah. There are some absolute best of the best Star Trek episodes. Um, duet, I've mentioned before in previous videos. The Visitor from Season 4. They're really quiet. They're usually, they're often Kira or Cisco episodes. But they are fantastic little gems. There's a really quiet episode from Season 6 about Cisco. 
um, basically just going against everything he stands for as a Federation officer and lying, covering things up, just to help the effort of the war. Yeah. And it's a really quiet episode, but no flashbang, no... But that is like 10 out of 10 episode. It's one of the best Star Trek episodes. Mm. Because it, it, it kind of turns the, the whole idea of being a... In this squeaky clean universe, which I do like that squeaky clean universe. I don't want the the, the horrible of Discovery and Picard mm. and that. But I like something that's just a little... Sometimes I like something a little bit out of that squeaky clean. And Deep Space Nine's characters become a little less squeaky clean as, as it, it goes on. And I like that. Yeah. So after my sort of grandstanding there, those are the big things about it. And it's hard to find a TV series where you get all of those things. Mm. You get world building, you get good characters, you get loads of these really fantastic standalone episodes as well. And then you get the big epic story arc sort of thing. Isn't that? So that for me, that's what holds up. I think, I don't know, maybe I'm a little like monkey brain or something. No, I'm but... sure that's not the case <laughs> at all. But, um, <laughs> like, if I'd have watched every episode... I wouldn't have got this. One. No, you no, I, I no, no. Just, I'd have stopped. Uh, uh, most people don't. I think most people don't. It's it's a real slow build. I it's think a slow growth. After watching it once, I could probably go back and watch every episode mm. and like just just the, the like standalone whatever episode. I think when it. you see where it's gone mm. and where it goes to in the end, then then maybe. Yeah. But you'll probably still find that you go back. I skip episodes now yeah. when I rewatch it. Not because they're crap, but because I want the spectacle. Or yeah. I want those big 10 out of 10 mm. episodes to watch. If I'm really thinking going to be like the completest watch rewatch, yeah. I will go through that. But I do skip episodes. Mm. There are, there, there are some, I've skipped a lot of There are some terrible <laughs> episodes in Deep Space Nine. First season, Move Along Home, is a god-awful episode. It really is. Move Along Home, Move Along Home. Um, people out there who know Star Trek will know what I'm, what I'm talking about with that one. It's a hard one to sell people on sometimes. And I just keep bashing on about it and saying, no, 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 it really is yeah. worth it. But it's a hard sell. I don't think I'd have got through the first season. Watch it. Maybe I might have, but not the second. I didn't. I said I'd be... I yeah, you, I said you, said you stopped, yeah. I stopped halfway through season one. And it was only at the end of season one, into the beginning of season two, that I thought, actually, this is... I like the characters, but I thought the stories were piss poor. Mm. And then I thought, actually, this, they're getting to grips with this now. This is really good. You know, mm. I'd like to see where it's going to go. And it never let me down. I don't ever think there was ever a point, maybe season four, when they took the emphasis off the Dominion a bit and then got back to it again. I'm glad they did. Yeah. Um, with these stories, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So, shall we... Anything else you want to say before we rate the episodes? So, right. So, we'll go with Broken Link, the first episode. It's been a, a while since <laughs> either of us watched this one. I'm going to give Broken Link a 7 out of 10. That was also my thing. Really? Yeah. Right. It's not... It's not, it's, not, it's not. It's not. It's not really brilliant, fantastic, but it's not by no means is it crap. There's, it's there's a very interesting, good episode. There's, there's interesting, lots of interesting ideas in it. Yeah. yeah. Apocalypse Rising. I think it's a. It's it's above Broken Link. Yeah. I think it, maybe an eight. I'd give that. Okay. I'm gonna go seven point five. Yeah. For that one, because um, I, as I think about an, an eight score for an episode, I don't think it's quite good enough yeah. to be an eight. Uh, Rapture. 8.5, that one. Okay. I'm going to give it a 9. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's up there. The Begotten. Now, I, I th if the Kira stuff just I know exactly there, what you're going to say. I was saying... I, I, it would be higher. Yeah. But I think I'd probably give it the same rating. Right. The 8.5. Really? I think if the Kira stuff wasn't in it, because that was just sort of whatever forgettable, it'd be a 9. Or maybe even higher. Yeah, if it was, if it wasn't for, uh, if it wasn't for that, it would be a nine for me. Yeah. I think the Kira stuff, I find that uh, beating of that bloody drum and the tambourine in <laughs> Kira's quarters. <laughs> <laughs> what the? It's like bloody. It's like Brian big, just sits there the whole time. Doesn't yeah, dong, dong. It's like Big Sir, and you know, it's like uh, the new age hippie sort of, <laughs> and she, and like. They're not like <laughs> I'm not to be too graphic here, but you know, labour going. You're not screaming your head off and clawing the bed, and <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> you got to play um, the drums. But she's like, you know, you've got to be really relaxed, and you've got to play some bongo drums and tang bang a tambourine and doom <laughs> and a little gong and that. And then you're like, this is slightly excruciating to watch. It, it is. And then yeah. And then it's like. You've disturbed it. Yeah. We've got to stop yeah. again. <laughs> well, I don't want to watch it again. I don't want to watch you doing it again. <laughs> We've already had enough of this. And that nurse, my God, she's 
bit annoying that nurse, you know, the, the the midwife woman. Yeah. Um, that really damages that episode for me. If it wasn't, for, if that was out of it, this would be a nine. Yeah. I'm going to give it a seven. Ooh, a seven. Yeah. I want to much. give it more. Yeah. Big, but uh, the, the if you if you're looking at the content of the episode, what's in it that's good? Yeah. If you've got something fantastic, but you've got 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes of an episode that's that's really knocked into the shitty territory, you can't justifiably give the whole episode a nine, can you? That's true. That is true. I want yeah. to give the Odo story a nine. Yeah. I, if it was Odo, that Odo story is fantastic, yeah. but it's a seven because of the Kira stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's bloody tamarine and whatever. No, it's not tamarine, it's a gong. I don't it? even know and how... Sh- be shakers. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Why did they do... Well, why didn't they... No, that, was that necessary? Can't no. you put... put just fucking reggae on it. <laughs> yeah, get, get them all on spliffs and put a bit of Marley on and that. <laughs> that I would have liked. Enjoy, I would have enjoyed watching that. <laughs> So it's not, a comedy. It's not a comedy. We aren't enjoy it. The characters aren't it's enjoying it. it. <laughs> and Brian's like, just speak it. And he goes like, Shh, I know, but come on. <laughs> Wasted visit from Shakar as well, really, because, you know, he's the minister, first minister yeah. of Asia, and all he's doing is arguing with Miles and Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's not really anything else to say about that. <laughs> <episode>. <laughs> right, so, uh, in uh, Purgatory's Shadow. I am unsure... But I, I am leaning towards a cheeky 9.5 to 10. I think the only thing that would maybe stop it from being a 10 is like not really a lot happens near to the start. But it is all really good, so probably it's a 10. Massive build up, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's probably a 10. There's uh, yeah. a lot of good content. Now you're going to compare this to later episodes, probably. I am. You're this is go, the problem. Now this is. If I was watching it at this point now, I would say 10. Yeah. But. I mean, I can invent... The only other way around it is to invent a whole new rating system for later <laughs> episodes that have got, like, 15 out of it. <laughs> um, a 9.5. Yeah. It's not quite there. By, Infer- by Inferno's light... But I did, I did actually prefer the first part to the second part. Yeah. I think the second part and nine. Okay. Just, yeah. a, just a bit under, I'd say. Nine for me. Mm. Because it, it, it ducks out on the um, promise at the end yeah, a yeah. little bit. It's like you want well, a big fight, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the trouble is that big fight is coming. Yeah, yeah. it's coming at the end of season mm. six, five, um, and then some. <laughs> it yeah. really is, and to do it mid-season, it was quite clever actually because they could have done all of that at the end of season mm. five, but then you would have had to have waited for all of that to happen, and would it would they have been able to have crammed it into a one or two part at the end of the season? It would have been like a three, four part. And that mm. point, they were still trying to avoid serialising the series a little bit. So doing it mid-season, yeah, yeah. it's a better, better yeah. choice, I think. Um, but they could, they therefore had to remove the the actual attack yeah. <laughs> for that reason. So nine for me, yeah. 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 So I think we'll leave that there for now. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I really enjoyed yeah. doing this. It's probably been me yak yak down yeah, fan loving Deep Space Nine, but <laughs> there you go. And uh, and Dan and I will see you again very very soon. Take care. Yes, goodbye.